I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to my channel, Holy Spirit and I. My name is Bruno Lompofu, and if this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. And do not forget to subscribe. And if you are part of our family, thank you so much for watching. And do not forget to share the message. So today I just wanted us to discuss, um, it's almost like a sequel from the video before the previous one, where we were talking about overwhelming issues of life, when you're just overwhelmed with one blow after another but um having spent time with the holy spirit he's been revealing to me certain things regarding um certain hard situations i've been going through personally and he's been revealing what is the thought and the plan of god towards um what i'm going through so i just want us to read um the book of exodus and then we will delve deeper into the word of today so let us pray Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you that let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I thank you, O God, for the obedience that you give us, my God. Father, I thank you for what you are teaching us in this season. Lord, I also thank you that you are faithful and you stay constant. I thank you that you never change, O God. I thank you that you are always the same. You were, you are, and you will always be, O God. Father, I thank you that you are the great I am. I thank you for today. Today, oh God, and I thank you for the word of today. May your grace, oh God, give us the strength to carry on knowing that you are with us. Your presence is more than enough for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So I just want us to read Exodus and get to understand the, I guess, what i personally am going through i feel like the israelites in the wilderness because i feel like there's so many things that are happening and also i've been praying to god that i do not miss the small miracles even the bigger ones because what happened with the children of israel is like they constantly didn't see the miracle that was happening for them each and every day there was a, a cloud by day a fire by night so i mean to see that it means they didn't acknowledge the presence of God. So I just want us to get deeper into the word and to uh, um, honor and accept the, the presence of God that what we sing saying, your presence is heaven to me. Is it really when you get overwhelmed with issues? Is it really? Um, the other thing I want us to discuss is what is on the altar of your praise. Because um, if you complain about... Um, I have so much trouble. Oh my goodness, my life is so hard. That is the praises on your altar because you are praising your circumstances. You are telling um, people how your life is like. You are praising your life. You are giving praises to your life. It, irregardless of you are complaining or you are, uh, you are edifying basically your problems when you say oh my life is so hard i don't have money i need money i need this oh my goodness i need to pay rent my children's school fees it's just one thing on top of another but you have created an altar where you constantly are praising the things that are um overwhelming you in life so i just want us to read exodus and and find out what God is saying in this season regarding our issues of life and regarding his presence in our lives. So let us um, read the word. Book of Exodus 14. I'm specifically going to start from verse 15 till around 21. Um, giving you a bit of background with Exodus 14. It was the time where Moses was had now victory taking out the Israelites out of Egypt and Pharaoh had now agreed to give Moses um, the children of Israel with all that they had. So it was the time where after the Israelites left, the Egyptians now felt like, oh my goodness, why did we let them go? Let us pursue them because they had heard that they had camped around um, uh, Pi, a place called Pi, where um, God had told Moses that they must camp there for a while. And now um, the Egyptians thought that they are now in the wilderness, that they have nowhere to go, they're, they are facing going towards the, the Red Sea, and there's no way they could be able to swim with all their flock to the other side. So they knew if we go now and pursue them, we will overtake them and um, 
make them captives again. However, God had a bigger plan than that. But let us read the scripture. We continue with the discussion of what is God's mind concerning our situation? What is God's thoughts concerning our situation? Because the Bible says, your thoughts are not my thoughts, so are your ways not my ways. So let us um, hear the mind of God. Exodus 14 verse 15, it reads as follows, follows. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I indeed will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. And the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Thus it was a cloud and darkness, and darkness to the one. And it gave light by night to the other so that the one did not come near the other all that night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. Amen. So the word tells us that what God said to Moses is, Moses, I've been with you. You know I'm here. I am a cloud by day, a fire, a pillar of fire by night. Why is it that you're still asking me to do things? Then he said, Moses, tell the Israelites to go forward. This is what God is saying to us. God is telling us, go forward. But I, I believe we lack the spiritual sight to see what God has in store for us because I can believe that with our physical eyes, all that we see is our problems. As the Israelites, when, when God was telling Moses, tell the children of Israel to go forward. I mean, the question is forward where? Here's the sea. The Red Sea is vast. It's big. It's huge. What, what, where are we going? We can't swim with our sheep and our cow. Some of us have babies. How are we going to cross um, the ocean? Perhaps this is what you're feeling. You're feeling like something in your spirit says, keep going, go forward, keep going. But you're asking yourself, go forward to what? Look forward to what? It seems as if things are pressing on you. If it's you feel like you've you've um, overcame one thing, then another thing starts doing something else. You start um, having another greater challenge than the one you had before. And in your spirit, you feel this go forward, move forward, press on. But you feel like, where am I pressing on to? What am I working towards to? So today I just want to reveal the mind of God towards our situation because when I was spending time with the Holy Spirit, this was what the Holy Spirit was showing me. And it showed me that when there's there's always a time where you feel like you are in between um, chariots and horses coming at the speed of lightning and the sea and you are at this in the middle of this hard place and you're asking yourself, is this where my life ends? Where um all things end because it seems your enemies, your enemy could be your children not um, being obedient. Your enemy could be your rent. Your enemy could be your school fees. Your enemy could be your studies. It doesn't necessarily mean um, the devil are taking you or you know, spiritual things that you're seeing at night doesn't necessarily mean that, but it could mean certain things that you're trying to overcome to live a better life. And you feel like these things are obstacles in my life. Those could be chariots and horses, and those could be the Red Sea. So what the Holy Spirit was showing me was, um, we, we say we have God and we believe the presence of God is with us. Hence, God said to Moses, tell the Israelites to go forward. God will not call you to something when he has not planned for you to cross over. So when God said, tell the Israelites to go forward, God already knew that the sea has to part. And remember, God said, I will honor myself. 
over the egyptians so the egyptians can know that i am god i am the lord god of israel i am the lord who delivers just when your enemies the things that overwhelm me thought they have the better of you then god makes up something so great as parting the sea so if you are in the middle of something right now and you feel like you can't go you can't look to the left, neither to the right. God is about to divide the sea for you. God is about to let you walk into your miracle. But what I want us, I want us to go further into um, working in what God has called you into. Working in obedience to what God has called you into. Because you find that if you see... Um, the the waters divided now moses has divided the waters if you go on in scripture you realize that that now the sea is divided and you see dry ground you still need a certain amount of faith to believe that i can walk in between these two divided um bodies of water and some of us are in between that miracle you are you are walking right inside the divided waters. But all that you can see, yes, is you keep looking back to see how far the chariots and the horses are. They're coming. They're, they're, they're going to overtake me. You know, these things are pressing on on me. But God instructed us, go forward. Keep going forward. You are working in a miracle. You are work. You are working in a place that God has made a place for you. God has given you a chance to actually um, go to the other side. Now it's the time that we don't look back at what is coming against us but we look forward to what god has promised us because god said i will firmly establish you in righteousness in righteousness you are firmly established there's no way you can move or be separated the uh, uh, romans 8 39 says nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of god so we walk because we get we were given instructions by god go forward israelites bonolo go forward Whatever you do, every waking morning, every day you wake up in the morning, you realize that this is a new day and God has given me new mercies. There's a new mercy today for me to keep going forward. I mean, when the Israelites were still in the wilderness, there was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Yet they still said, oh, God has brought us in the wilderness so he can kill us because there aren't many grave sites in egypt for all of us so he brought us to the wilderness but it's it's almost like you also when you are when you are in the midst of walking in your miracle you also have to keep guard of what is on the altar of your praise as you are walking in 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 the two in between the two bodies of water you still need to say jesus is lord jesus is lord there are chariots or and horses coming at at the back there are chariots and horses. There are rent, school fees, children, husband, marriage, um, life, work, um, studies. It's just a lot of things happening. There are these things coming after you. Yet the Lord said, go forward. And you don't look back. You press on. On your altar, you put Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. He who is able to do all things. You press forward. The pressing forward, for me, it's it's understanding who God is to me, understanding the presence of God to me on the altar of my praise. What is there? What is the sure thing? Because it's not a question of what God can do for you. It's a question of what can you give to God? What can you do for God? Because I mean, there, there isn't really anything you can give God, but all that you have is your life. You have your time. You have your tongue. You have your will. If you can use all of those things and put them on the altar of your praise, 
being it on Jesus Christ himself and saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know you said I'm the head and not the tail. This is pressing forward. This is what you do as a believer. You press forward. And how do you press forward? By putting Jesus on your altar. You don't put your situation on your altar. You don't complain about your situation because those are the praises you are giving to your situation. But you praise the Lord God Almighty that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You pray press forward that you are you you are you are mindful of me your thoughts towards me are good thoughts thoughts of peace you press forward that is how you press forward as a believer you remind yourself of the sure things that are given to you because the word of god says that the promises of god are yes and amen unto the glory of god by us so every time we we say the word of god it's a remembrance to god that this child trusts me. This child knows that I'm here. This child, you know, this is just to edify yourself by saying, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. You go forward. This is you pressing on. You press on by saying, for my thoughts are not God's thoughts. God's thoughts are higher than my thoughts. That's pressing forward. So with every scripture, like I said in uh, my other last videos, that there is a scripture for everything that you go through on this earth. And if everything is intertwined and if everything is within Jesus, then the only person you should be pursuing is Jesus. Because if you think by following Jesus, you lose something, you don't lose anything because everything is in him. So if you pursue Jesus, you find everything in him. So when you start to feel like you are the pressures of life are, 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 are banging on your door. The pressures of, of, of life are challenging you mentally because that's the only place where the devil seems to think that he can have some sort of way is you press forward. How do you press forward? You remind yourself of the words of God and you remember this one thing that what your enemy thinks will swallow you will be the one to swallow your enemies. This is what happened to the Egyptian. This is why it was called the Red Sea because all the Egyptians were swallowed up in the two divided body of waters. And every Egyptian, all the 300 men that Pharaoh got, they all died in that water. That was a miracle for you. The miracle for the Israelites crossing through the two bodies of waters was what the detriment and the, the perishing and the, the killing of the Egyptians. So know this, that what you are going through, you are crossing over to the other side. So be careful that sometimes you might be judging your own miracle. You might be walking in between the two bodies of water and in it yes the thought of these two bodies of water could swallow me up the, the the ocean could just close up on me but you remember the promises of god that i am forever with you i can never leave you nor forsake you i am always with you before you were formed in your mother's womb i knew about you i know the numbers of your hair on your head how then can god not solve your situation is there anything too hard for the lord this is in numbers you know so the bible constantly helps us to press forward the bible constantly help us to move forward because this is an instruction from the lord moses tell the israelites to go forward yes you see the ocean yes the chariots are coming they are instead of remembering what god has been doing for them they forgot and they said, God has brought us out that he might kill us in this wilderness because there were not enough grave sites in Egypt. So let us not be the Israelites. You know where God has taken you. I don't even need to know um, where God has taken you up from. But when those issues, they come up, remind them that God has paid my rent before. God has done it for my kids before. God has done it for me before. I've been in a situation similar to this, if, if not worse than this. Why is this one trying to swallow me up? It's, it's the same thing. Like they go on to see many miraculous things. And I mean, to be eating and your clothes not wearing off after years and years and years, it's a miracle on its own. So let us remember the promises of God. Let us 
um especially um people who are going through a lot right now dwell in the word find scriptures for your situation for me personally this scripture was for my situation because i spent time with the holy spirit and i asked him i need a breakthrough i need a breakthrough show me something give me something and the holy spirit told me when the israelites felt the way you are feeling right now the chariots of pharaoh coming and the ocean did the lord not did the lord god not make a way for them just when they think they are being swallowed up just when they think this is the day of their death then the lord said to them go forward so our, today all i wanted to say was go forward remembering what the lord has promised because the lord the lord's things are sure in his words psalm 23 says surely surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life so remind yourself that surely it is a sure thing that mercy and goodness are following you following you all the days of your life tell your circumstances surely goodness and mercy they are following me around goodness and mercy wherever i'm going wherever when i'm writing my tests when i have a major a board exam to write surely goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life and that alone should be able to ignite you it should be able to activate you to understand your position as a son of god because as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god so if you believe in jesus christ you have the holy spirit and i believe by watching this channel it's called the holy spirit and i you yearn for the things of the spirit you are led by the spirit speak to the holy spirit tell him how you're feeling and i i assure you he will show you the way to go. It says, commit thy ways unto the Lord and he will prosper them. So with all of that, I would like to say, press forward. Take the word every day, whatever circumstances you're going through, look it up in the word. Someone has gone through it and tell yourself, I'm going through to the other side. I'm only in the middle of my miracle. I'm walking between two divided um, bodies of water. I'm walking on dry land and walking on dry land alone, in two bodies of waters that are separated i don't believe the ocean to have um dry ground but i do know that where there's been water you will have a muddy type of um soil but the bible says it was dry where they were working so i believe god will make a way for you believe that the lord will make a way for you it's not a matter of what he can do for you he had already promised you all that he he can do for you and he will be doing for you all you need to do is believe 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 so with all of that let us close may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit father we thank you for your word that is comforting us we thank you that we are pressing forward we thank you that we are going forward oh god with your word you have equipped us because you have placed eternity in us oh god we have mudimuaka the depth the well of understanding oh god lord i thank you for the holy spirit that is always helping us to draw from that well to understand understand our position as your sons oh jesus father i thank you god the holy spirit thank you for this time in the name of jesus christ we pray amen and i will see you